Hi guys! Welcome to Dee Dee and Boris in the Mythical Forest and today I'm doing another jackfruit. <clears throat> so, oh, this one I let it go a little riper than I should have, but the last one, um, I didn't, I don't want to turn it over to show you, let's see if I can see. The last one wasn't ripe enough, so this is like, look. It's so ripe that it's like rotted on the outside. So I believe the fruit's going to be okay. Um, but I just wanted to show you the uh, cut. I've cut the jackfruit open already. Um, it was a lot easier to cut open that it's super, super ripe than it is when it's um, not ripe. But this is the core. you got to cut this out. And I'll just rinse it off. So I'll just flip it over. I want to show you. You see how the spots look if you touch it. It's like, ooh, see that? So I sprayed it because it had a little mold on it too. I sprayed it with um, um, peroxide. And I rinsed it off really good. And now I'm getting ready to put my gloves on. I've got my knife covered here with a, a sticky saran wrap. Because um, it gets all over your 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 stuff. Because there's like a um, um, like a petroleum based uh, sticky substance that's on the on the skin of the fruit, and it it's hard to get off unless you put oil to clean it. So anyway, um, I'm going to be freeze drying this jackfruit, and it's my favorite, and. Um, Jackfruit is extremely nutritional. If you're on a desert island, you could probably survive with just that because it's got everything in it that you need, protein even. So, um, anyway, thanks for watching us. I hope that you guys can like and subscribe to some of our videos if you find any of them interesting or helpful. And um, we appreciate you watching. And I will give you an update once I get all of this cleaned. And pulled apart. Oh, yes. And the seeds. I am going to make a hummus out of all the seeds. And I'll show you that today. So you pull all the seeds out of each pod. There's a pod. You see? The, there's a pod in each. This is a pod right here. And you take away all this white stuff. Boris isn't here to help me video. So I, it's hard for me to... I'll try to see if I can set the camera up to show you what I'm doing. We'll see. I will try. Okay, everybody. I kind of figured out how to do this. We are not professional um, videographers. <laughs> but it, I wanted to show you how I cut this jackfruit up, how I do it. Um, and um, I don't know if you guys have ever eaten jackfruit before, but it, to me, it's delicious. I want to show you. Look how big it is. And you can see the little spikes. And you're in the store and you're like, what is that thing? It looks like a monster. You see the little spikes? Look. Okay. So, next time you're in the store, you can uh, pick one up and try it. And, um, they're like 20 bucks for, for one. And, I mean, it's bigger than, a foot, bigger than a football. There's a lady. I picked one up and I put it in my cart. And I had like my bag, my reusable bag, like on the cart. And I set it on top of it. And the lady was like, oh, my God. I thought you were putting down a baby in there. <laughs> no, it's a jackfruit, ma'am. <laughs> okay, let's get to it. So, oh, let's see. I feel like I feel like that. Let's get back here, cause, um, okay. So, it's kind of difficult to do sometimes. This is just popping off. Okay, I want to show you this. Look. Okay, you see, you see this part, this white part right here. This. You don't want it's the pod and you can see once you start digging into it 
you can see the pods. You see? That's a pod. The pods have a hollow space in them where a seed. I'll, I'll get one and show you in a second. So anyway, I'm going to put this in the, here in the, that one, and that one's going to be for seeds. I've kind of got this messed up a little here. So, and then I have like one container for compost and one for the worms. So, because the worms like to eat the fruity bits and uh, the other stuff I'm just going to compost. You see, you peel these little, little, slightly different color pieces off. Let's see if I can find another piece here for you. Now see, this piece is a little, a little too rottenish. Oh, here we go. You know what? You know what part is rotten? It's the part you're not supposed to eat. The pod was still intact. It's not really rotten. It's just overly ripe. So, wash that off. I've got, I've got a pot of water here. I don't usually use water, but because, um, because the, 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 um, skin got a little moldy because I wanted it to get really ripe. Um, I've got this special stuff. I cannot find it anywhere in the United States. Let me, let me show it to you. Get it in Mexico. It's called Bacdin. B-A-C-D-Y-N. And it's, I don't even know how to speak Spanish, so Boris is not here to translate for me, but look at that. It's got like a, it's got like a superhero on it. You see that? And, uh, Hey, babe, can you come here and translate this real quick in Spanish for everybody? Anyway, you see it's got pictures of fruits and vegetables on it. It's, I believe it's colloidal silver inside of here. And maybe iodine, I don't know. Can you see here? You it's see? called, uh... What does that say? I don't have my glasses. Oh, here. I don't think you can use my glasses. They're my mm -hmm. prescription. Right here, right here. Uh... Desinfecta agua, desinfected water, y alimentos, and, 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 and nutrients. Nutrient, desinfected water and nutrients. Something. What? Yeah, did you... But what about all this other stuff on it? I can't read it with, uh, with the glasses you wear. Okay, sorry guys. Anyway, this is what they use to clean their vegetables from bacteria. So you soak your vegetables or you wash your vegetables in it and it, and it kills the bacteria. But you can also put it in your water. You can put a few drops in your water to kill bacteria in your water. So they have problems with that over there. So anyway, I love that stuff. It's cleaning it. So anyway, I'm going to show you. See see how I don't usually tilt it like this, but just trying to show you all. You see, using a knife to go through, pull it apart. So it's so ripe that it's just pulling right off of the pod. This is the part you don't want. This stuff right here, you can't eat it. It's full of, um, like, petroleum-based sap sort of something. Anyway, I don't know how to describe it. Okay, here's the pod. It's kind of, you see the pod's cut open at the top because I cut it, right? And inside the pod is that seed. You see the seed? Yeah. Pull that seed out. And that seed... We're going to make, with the seeds, we're going to make, um, and the seeds are big. The seeds we're going to make, uh, yeah, this stuff's just pulling. I don't even need to use this, use the knife with this. It's just pulling apart. But with this, we're, with the seed, we're going to make a hummus. That's a big pot. You see that? I'm going to freeze dry it. I'm kind of breaking it apart so that it's easier for when the freeze dryer... When I freeze dry it, it's easier if I lay them flat if I can like that. So, yeah. So, the, 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 um, what do you call it? Um, I can't even think straight when I'm trying to do something talk. So, I apologize, you guys. All right. Uh, what was I talking about? You see, it just comes right off. It comes right off. And I've got my bags here. Hanging on the handles of my thing. I'm going to cut that because it looks a little more. Louie will probably eat this too. This uh, um, looks a little more uh, ripe than 
So I just cut off the part that I thought was a little extra ripe. This is very time consuming, I can tell you that. But let me tell you, whew, in my opinion, I love jackfruit. And I love, see that's a big pod, you see that? Look how big that pod is. Now see, there's a little bit of an overly ripe area right there. I'm just gonna cut it out. Take the seed out, pop the seed out, put the seed over here. So for the seeds, you boil it. You boil the seed. I think last time I might have, see I'm gonna cut that little piece. It's a little extra more ripe than I want. Um, I think last time I boiled the seeds in the microwave, in the, in the microwave steamer. But you just wanna boil them enough that they kinda of turn mushy in the middle and um, you peel them, and then you peel them. You gotta peel the seed. See, this seed's got a little piece cut off of it. You can see the inside of the seed there. Let's see, I don't know if I can peel it. It's not easy to peel when it's... It's not easy to peel when you got it fresh, so it's better to boil it and peel it like a potato kind of. And then the consistency is kind of like potato. So see that, that's all going in the compost. No good. No good for the chickens and no good for, I, I don't think the chickens like it. Well, the chickens probably wouldn't want to eat it anyway because it is full of that stuff, but it composts all right. It takes a while to compost, but it will. And you know what else? You know what else this is good for? Oh, maybe what I'll do is I'll put it in my black soldier fly bin because it takes a long time to compost and it'll have that weird fermented nasty smell that the black so look at that's all mush the black soldier flies love that fermented smell to attract them to my black soldier fly bin so you know what i think i'm gonna put that in my i'm gonna put all this i think in my black soldier fly bin instead of my compost bin now when i when this is not really right it's kind of hard kind of cut through a little bit so this is just melting off like butter. I don't like the fact that there's some, you know, moldy places on the, on the, um, what do you call it? The skin. But, man, this makes it so much easier to pull off. And then I'm just, you know, I'm disinfecting the fruit right here. So, um, you could probably put, vin put, put vinegar water also. Um, or you could put maybe a little bit of, let's see, there's seed peroxide. I put peroxide on the top, but I mean, even, even if you just put water and rinse it good, you know. Anyway, so let's keep going. We got a whole nother jackfruit half to go. So I'm pulling these pods off. And if you can't get these stringy, meaty pieces off the pods real real good what you have to do sometimes is cut it right here on that bottom tip and then they'll fall right off but this is so ripe that it's just falling off for me look there's your there's your seed see look you see you open it up it's almost like a i don't even know what you can even see, uh-oh, I dropped a seed on the floor. Look, you can see the pods, individual pods, wrapped up with these little things. You see, you just put, pull that right off like that. You see that? Look at that. Look at that. There we go. Just take the seed out of the pod. You see the seed in the pod? And then put the pod in the water here. And like I said, in the past, in the past, um, I didn't put the, the pods in the water because I, I didn't need to. So, but I can tell you that it's been a lot more difficult. Y'all wonder why I'm bending down? I've got like my, got myself a little, um, 
bucket of uh, just a tiny bit of bleach in water with some soap so that I can keep things sanitized around here while I'm doing this because I picked that picked this uh, seat off the floor. Okay. So, and I've got my jackfruit in the sink, so that's why I don't have the, that little container. Look, I'll show you. I don't have it in the for a 99 cent store. I, I was using this to inside my sink to disinfect all my fruit and stuff during COVID. I was so scared when COVID first came out. I was bleaching my fruit, guys. Sometimes I still do that. Because, look, think about it. When you cut your fruit, you just get it home from the store, cut your fruit. How many hands do you think touch that piece of fruit, especially avocado? Oh my God. And so I want the skin to be clean before I put my knife into it and cut the knife, bringing the bacteria into the fruit. So that's why I do it. I'm a bit of a clean freak. So I wash my banana skins now down with um, peroxide. Or I use my technique where I don't touch anything after I touch my banana skin. I pull the banana skin. I'll have to show you my technique. Pull the banana skin off without touching the banana. I have a separate plate that I put the banana on and the skin goes into the compost, but I don't touch anything. I don't touch my fingers after I've touched the banana peel. But it's just easier if I just clean the bananas before I put them out. That way, they're already clean if I want to grab a banana real quick. Boris wants to grab one real quick or an apple. I always wash my apples before I put them out ready for someone to, you know, grab. Can y'all see me pulling this? It's just pulling out so good. Look. Ooh, that seed just popped right out of there. You see? where the seed would be. It just popped out. This is like a, the covering for the seed, but I, I throw that in the compost too. You see? There's a little piece that you would have missed. Do you see it? You don't want to eat that. You see? You'll be able to tell once y'all open these up what I'm talking about. They're like little membranes around the pods. But anyway, I made this... I made this hummus for Boris with the seeds and I put garlic and onion and salt and uh, some avocado oil and man he loved it sometimes I'm, I'm trying to get him to get used to eating healthier stuff and so all by himself the other day without me even asking or prompting it he was just going to cook himself something real quick because I wasn't hungry. And he went, he, he got, um, he put the greens, he put the Swiss chard on his plate, a whole bunch of it, and ate it without me. You know, because usually I put it on his plate and say, you have to eat at least one spoonful. But he did it himself. I'm so proud of him. He did it himself and he put a whole bunch. So I guess his taste buds are starting to get used to eating healthy, you know. And we tried to cut down on our sugar. We cut, tried to cut down on our sugar. I'm going to taste that. Oh my goodness, I love it. Taste in between, to me, cotton candy and cantaloupe and mango. To me, that's what it tastes like. Cotton candy, cantaloupe, and mango. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Right? Man, I always lose track of what I'm talking about. I've got ADD, if y'all can't tell. Um, oh, yes. He, used to eat this, he ate that Swiss chard um, that I grew. And um, so I'm real proud of him. Oh, I know what I was going to tell y'all. So we started trying to, like, not eat sugar for... Uh, it cut down, we cut down on our, our sugar 80, 80%, 90% of our sugar during the week. And um, on Sundays, is cheat day. 
So we get to eat whatever we want and as much sugar as we want on Sunday. And come Sunday, there's only so much sugar you can eat, in my opinion. <laughs> and um, if I make us, if I make, I've, I've realized that if I make us like pancakes on a Sunday or French toast, then we don't want any sugar. Like, in other words, you don't want to go get an ice cream or something at the ice cream parlor or whatever, you know? So, this Sunday, this Sunday, uh, I just, we just had eggs as usual, and, uh, and uh, we were able to have ice cream. So, and I want to ask y'all something. Have y'all noticed that people who are my age... I know you're not supposed to tell your age, but I don't really care. In California, everybody's fake as you know what. Anyway, I'm going to tell you. I'm, I think I'm 58. I forget how old I am. <laughs> I forget how to look at this camera. Anyway. Anyway. Um, people, y'all, anybody that's watching that's my age, around my age, or older. My age or older. Maybe, it, you know, maybe in the 40s might remember this. But does this seem like to y'all that the ice cream doesn't taste as good as it did back back in the day? What are they doing? It doesn't taste real. It doesn't taste like, it doesn't taste good. Like even Thrifty ice cream was one of my favorite ice creams. Remember, we'd go to Thrifty's and, and uh, at the drugstore and get that ice cream? It doesn't taste as good anymore. I don't know. I can't tell where the camera is. Anyway. I'm trying to look at y'all, but I, I can't figure out where to look. So, I mean, do y'all have the same, I mean, do you guys think the same thing as me? I mean, is it is it my imagination or is the ice cream not good anymore? I mean, what are they putting in it? Gosh, I mean, Thrifty Ice Cream used to be so good. And, and it don't taste good anymore. I should say, it doesn't taste good anymore. I'm talking to country, aren't I? Um... I don't know. I mean, it just, it's just so weird. Um, and I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I just don't think you can get good ice cream anymore. It's hard to find. Um, there was this place in Buffalo, New York that my aunt took us to. I don't know what it was, but it was like custard ice cream. And it had to have been the best ice cream I ever ate in my life. And I remember it so vividly. I don't know. I must have been 8 or 10 or I don't know. But, oh, my God, it was delicious. I've had custard ice cream since, but there's nothing like that. I don't know where that place was uh, or who that place, you know, the name of it or anything. But I will never forget how good that ice cream was. And another place, when I was a little girl in Okinawa, my dad was in the military, and I remember the ice cream there tasting so good. It was delicious. It had a different taste to it, and um, and I remember I remember that distinctly. Um, and of course, going to Italy, the ice cream. Oh, the ice cream in Italy. I hope they never ever start making the ice cream bad in Italy. Poor people, if they have to start eating crappy ice cream like we got here. Oh. But anyway, anyway, I, I just got off on that. Um, so, what were we talking about? Um, the oh, uh, so we're gonna make the hummus with this. With this, make that hummus. It's real easy. You just put it in the blender, pretty much. Pretty much make it to the consistency that you want to use it to dip with. It's very easy to make. Just boil it and. The hardest part is getting the getting those uh, getting the peel off those seeds. That's the hardest part. And um, and as you can see, I'm only done. I'm only we're almost done with a half of a a half of a um, jackfruit right now. And how long it's taken? And it would have taken me a lot longer. Sometimes I like to just cut that. It just feels like this. It would have taken me a whole lot longer. If I had to, uh, if this was not right, 
I mean, it still tastes okay, not right, but oh, it's so much sweeter when you get them right. Just want to make the cup, it's so right, but the color of this, this stuff right here, is almost the color of the pods. Look, you see how it's slightly different color, so you can tell what part's not there, see? But when it's not as right, the color is much more distinct, and you can see. So, but it's just falling apart, which is great for me. Just pull that pot on. Here's a, another seed. The seeds are so nutritious. And you could freeze it, too, once you finish... You'd have to make, to make too much hummus. You could freeze it for another day. That's what I do. I like to make I like to make meals where I make way more than me and Boris need, and I freeze part of it. And now I'm starting to freeze dry, freeze dry. So I just put it right on the freeze dry tray and get it ready to freeze dry. So um, it makes it easier because it's already flat to just freeze it on the tray, but. Um, but that way, um, but freezing it is, is really great because um, I, I just, you know, freeze drying the fruit's great for us. Oh, I know why I was going to tell y'all. Freeze drying the fruit has helped us because, especially me, because, um, okay, look. Look at that. Oh, ooh, this reminds me of like Silence of the Lambs. Look at that. Doesn't that remind you of that movie? Look. It's like a piece of skull, like, like flesh. And that's like the skin. Oh, look, you guys. Sorry, I'm not trying to gross y'all out. <laughs> I'm weird. Look at that. Oh, man. And it feels funny. It feels like, like if you had thought maybe what it would feel like to have pig skin in your hand. Leatherish, weird feeling. Huh. All right, so that's almost done. I just got like a couple more pods here to do. Let's see if, oh man, my ADD, I'm trying to remember what I was talking about now. Too bad I'm not live, y'all could just text me real quick what I'm talking about, what I was talking about. Um, you know what, doing something like this in the kitchen by yourself with nobody around it really is therapeutic. It's almost like meditation. You know? Sometimes if it's just too small, you just give up. Look, forget it. That's too small for me to pick apart. Um, it's kind of like meditation, you know? Just kind of like here. You know, get you... I don't even like... I don't even put music on. I just come in here in my quiet mind, think about things. And do something like this. It takes a while. You know what I mean? It takes a while to do. And so it's almost, you know, because meditating is just doing one thing and not anything else. And focusing on one thing, right? You're focusing on your breath. Well, I have a really hard time with focusing. Really hard time with focusing. But if I'm doing something like this, I don't have to focus on my breath. I can focus on the project. And it's like meditative. It's like gardening, too. Same thing, you know, because I have a really hard time meditating because uh, my mind goes everywhere. But when I'm doing something like this, it keeps me it keeps me stuck on the on the task at hand, and it's sort of meditative. Does that make sense, anybody? Hmm? I'm rambling. So anyway. Um, Pretty much you have the gist of this. If you're sick and tired of listening to my rambling, you can click off now. Because I'm just going to keep rambling. I'm going to do the other piece. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I would tell you about this. Um, so that you can click off and go off your day if you're getting bored. I'm going to put this in this little bag down here. And I have for my... I've got a, 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 gar, a, a grocery bag tied to a handle of my drawer. And it's holding it on here real good. But I can't show you because my hands are all nasty. And I've got that camera perfect. And if I take it off, I'm going to mess everything up. So I'm cleaning all this, putting it in the bag. 
and I decided I'm not going to compost any of this. It's going to go straight to the black soldier fly bin. <laughs> and um, I'm going to wash my hand a little bit here. Um, what was I talking about? Whew, I guess y'all can definitely see I got ADD because I go from one subject to the next. All right. It's all right. So here, look at this. Look at this. Uh, look at hell. Rotten. That's the that's the inside part, and that's usually very. Um, the word is almost like a look. Look, I want to show you how 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 soft. Look. You can't, you can't do that when it's not all the way right. It's just coming off like butter. You see that? Look. See that? It makes it easier to get that pot out, that's for sure. You see? Otherwise, you, you have to cut it. Look at that. That's making it way. It's getting gooey. Woo! I think this is the ripest I've ever let them go. And I may do it next time because I kind of like this. I'm just showing y'all how, look at that. Now look, you see this one? It won't do that. I'm pushing as hard as I can and it won't. You see? Look, it won't do it because this part right here didn't get as, as right. You see? It won't go. But this part right here, I already pulled off the parts. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that when you're choosing your fruit, if it's at the store and it's already starting to look like that, you can still use it and you might even be able to give them, get a discount. Say, hey, this thing's rotten. Can I have it for half off? They don't know. They can't throw, they can't sell it if it's rotten, you know what I mean? But it's not rotten in the, in the inside. Babe, I'm still in here talking. Can you believe that? I'm in here just rambling like an ADD person. That's great, baby. There you go. You need to learn this stuff. Yeah, well, they're just listening to me talk about everything, and I got the camera still rolling, so. Okay. okay. So, I don't know. Can y'all see what I'm doing? There's a center of this. If you can get that out, it makes it easier. So, you see the center? In the center. So I'm cutting it, cutting the center out because it makes it easier to get all the pods when that center is out. Ugh. Yeah, I can't stand for, for very, very long because of my knees and my back. So this uh, jackfruit will be the only thing I'll do today, standing like this. I have to pick and choose day, every day what it is that I'm going to use my energy on because of, you know, all the things I got going on with my health. But that's okay. I'm sure there's a lot of people who do the same thing. You pick and choose the day. Okay, I, I'm going to do laundry today, or I'm going to do whatever it is today. And I kind of plan my week out. I knew that this was going to be ripe in a few days. I knew this was going to be ripe in a few days, so I had planned on the calendar what day that I was going to do this. So, I, uh, We'll do this, and then um, I might be able to do one other thing today. I need to go to the grocery store, so that'll probably do me in. Um, oh, let's go back to the sugar. So, uh, a lot of y'all are like, why don't you use uh, stevia? And, you know, first of all, can't use any of those sucralose and equal or... 
Splenda, those things are really bad for you. Like, really, really bad. But some of the natural stuff I can't use because I have interstitial cystitis. Y'all can look it up. I think there's only 3% of the population who have it. Interstitial cystitis. I don't know if I'm saying it right. It might be interstitial cystitis. Anyway. Um, it affects the black the lining of your bladder. So anyway, I'm not going to go into detail here. Y'all can look it up if you want to. But I can't eat a lot of stuff. There's not very many things I can eat. Very restricted on what I can eat. Just to give you an example, I can't have the good stuff. I can't have lemons, so I can't have lemonade. I can't have tomatoes, so I can't have pizza, spaghetti, or lasagna. I can't have um, coffee. I can't have tea. Um, I can't have chocolate. I can't have... Um, Anything with tannins in it. So I can't have pecans. Um, I can't have uh, anything that if you... Imagine if you cut your finger and you would pour whatever that substance is on that finger. If it would burn your finger with a cut in it, then you, you can't eat it. So that's just to give you a rough idea. Um, and so I can't have uh, stevia, which is a really great natural sweetener to keep you from eating sugar. But, you know, I think your taste buds still, you know, when you let yourself eat sweet stuff, your taste buds still crave the sweetness, even if you're giving it a sweet, fake, you know what I mean? Fake sweet. It's still, you know, so it's better if you can just go off of it completely and then slowly just here and there dabble in, in your sweet sugar. You know what I mean? So the only thing... You know, because my my food selection is so boring, um, I like to make a bone broth, in, it, it, like a bone broth tea in the morning. Um, and since I can't have tea, I can't have hot chocolate. I have, you know, I can't have, I can have chamomile tea, but I can't have anything that would, would resemble a hot chocolate or a, a, you know, I can have carob. I can have carob. But um, the bone broth is really good for you, and it's really great. Y'all should try it is I put a little sugar and milk in it and vanilla, and it, I trick my mind into thinking I'm having some kind of a, a latte thing, you know? And um, so, anyway, uh, you know, if I could have stevia, that'd be great, but I can't. So, um, y'all should try that bone broth and let me know how y'all like it, that concoction. Uh, so that's that's what uh, so so I'm trying to you know there's not too many things that I can have that I can enjoy and you know eating is is enjoyable so I just try to experiment with what I can do and so um, so with the sugar that's why um, I, I will have a little bit if I have a bone broth every day and then I have my dry, freeze-dried fruit is what I am using to substitute when I want something sweet. So, um, during the week when we're doing, you know, our no sugar week, um, I'm having my, um, cause I, I, I can't have all fruit either. I can only have pretty much bananas, apples, pears, watermelon, jackfruit, um, blueberries, Did I leave anything out? I think that's it. So, I'm limited. Um, but, if, if I have this freeze-dried, I have it in jars, and I just, if I, like, I want to, if, like, I think I want a piece of candy or whatever, you know, I, um, I go and I get that. Um, I'm, I'm not doing this to lose weight, because I'm not going to lose any weight. Let's just get real. I, um, I've got Hashimoto disease of the thyroid, and even though I'm taking thyroid medication, it, it ain't going to help. It's just part of the disease. You just can't, you know, you gain weight. You can't lose it. It's just, you know, even though, even doing intermittent fasting. So, so anyway, you just got to accept the things that you can't change, right? And try to live your life and be happy as you can. So, thank God, Boris likes big butts. And um, I'm not going to worry about it anymore. I do the best that I can. I get as much exercise as I can with, 
what I'm limited to do. I can't walk the dog anymore like I used to be able to do years ago. But, you know, I can maybe walk him for five minutes. Um, Boris walks the dog for me now. And, um, anyway, so that's why I was telling you about the sugar thing and not being able to eat. That's why this fruit is so, so good for you. And I am so grateful. I am so grateful that I can eat this fruit. Because what if I couldn't, you know? There's a lot of stuff that I can't eat. So I am so, every time I eat a piece of this fruit, I think, thank you, Lord. And I am so grateful that I have the opportunity to eat this fruit. And I think about all the time that it's taken me to prepare this fruit. And I've been just grateful to myself. Grateful that I am that was able to prepare this fruit. And I hope that I'll be able to do this, you know, I can do something like this once a month. Uh, and I freeze dry it. Freeze, freeze dry it, I'm telling you, for this is just is amazing. Oh, man. I can't tell you enough how wonderful this is, freeze drying this. Mm. Uh, but, you know, uh, and the, the Harvest Rack freeze dryer, I think I've done a video on this, but one of the things I have to tell y'all, if y'all decide to get it, they are expensive. They're expensive. But I treated myself one year as a Christmas gift. I gave it to myself. Um, but I have to tell you that the first one that they sent me was defective. Because they guys, I guess they have such a huge demand that they're trying to, the manufacturing, it, it's, it's in Idaho, I believe. Idaho? Yeah. Um, is it Idaho? Utah. It's either Utah or Idaho. We're the manufacturing plant. It's USA made, though. You know I love that. Uh, and they had such a high demand that I think that they were pushing out machines that maybe, you know, too soon. So, anyway... It took a long time for them to figure out that it was mine was defective. But luckily, the machine has a software that you can download on a little stick thing. And they can um, tell by, you download it and send them the files and they can tell that something went wrong. So, they were very good about re sending me a new one. But I have to say, they're so heavy that I had to pay somebody to help me um, to lift it bring it in the house in the first place. It's heavy as can be. Um, and then I had to get somebody to help me pack it up to send it back. And then when they sent, you know, they sent the new one, they sent the new one before I sent the old one back. Um, they sent the new one, um, same thing. So it's, it's very awkward. The, the, the way that it's made is real awkward to lift it. And you don't want to drop it. It's like, you know, dropping a refrigerator. It's, you know. And, um, anyway. And the pump gets very hot. The pump gets very hot. And I was scared that, is it going to blow up or catch on fire? It's so hot. But apparently that's normal. But just don't touch it, y'all. Don't let your kids touch that. It's hot. It'll burn your finger. So, um, anyway. Th those are the things. Uh, I sent them a message I sent them a message to the lady who was helping me uh, with re refund, not refund, and returning mine. Um, and I said, y'all need to make the unit, and I think I made a video. I don't know if I've uploaded it yet about the freeze dryer. But they need to make handles on each side of that freeze dryer so that people can lift it. If they incorporated handles, built-in handles on the freeze dryer, it would be real easy to do. Um, they just could poke two holes in the middle and put some kind of rivet things, and then they could, um, well, like I did with my pots, huh? Y'all yeah, well, saw my video on the black pots, where I put the handles on them, and so, oh, looky here, I didn't even realize I'd already moved the second part of my jackfruit over here, and I'm almost done, guys. See, it, ha it just help. time goes by fast when you're talking to people you love. Anyway, ooh. So, uh, 
I told them that they should put that handle on there because it would make it so much easier. And, um, you know, I think I talk different when I'm on YouTube than I went would with, I was talking to my friends. It's so weird. I guess because I feel like I'm being an instructional teacher or something up here. I don't know. It's so weird. <laughs> but anyway, I think they should put a handle on that thing. If they did, it would make it so much easier to carry. Because it's, it's heavy, but like 240 pounds or something like that. But, and that's for the medium size. But it's awkward also. So imagine trying to lift something where you can't get a grip on it. You know, the sides are slippery like a refrigerator, you know. Can't get a grip on it. And um, so anyway, and then getting it through the door. My house doors are smaller than most people's because I have an adobe house. And... Um, that, I should have measured too. Have to measure anything before I buy it because it won't, may not fit through the door. Had to take a window out just to get a couch in. Anyway, um, so here you guys. I'm almost done here. And uh, we're going to... I gotta, I'm gonna microwave. I'm gonna do a microwave. Boil those in the steamer again in the microwave. It just makes it easier to do that. And then I can put it in the blend, uh, peel it and put it in the blender. See how easy these are popping off. I mean, I'm not really losing too much. Um, there was a few pieces you might have saw me cutting off here that was a little bit riper, slimy. You can kind of feel. You can feel if it's a little slimy. It's not rotten. It doesn't stink or taste bad. It's just overly ripe. You know, okay, here's how I can explain it. You know how when the bananas go really dark, and some of y'all might not realize that you can still eat that banana if it's almost black on the outside. That banana is, when it gets black on the outside, is sweet like candy inside. And that's what you make banana pudding with. You know, or you can uh, take those bananas, peel all that black uh, peel off, and freeze it. It's like sh sweet sugar. Putting it in your in your in your protein drinks, fro freeze frozen drinks, and um, so oops, so uh, that's that's the consistency of when this jackfruit gets too ripe. It's a little mushy, like a ripe banana, but it's not. You know, I'm sure if it gets too a certain point that it's going to be rotten where you can smell the smell that it's rotted fermented like but i haven't with this being this ripe i haven't found any problems but just a few places i've cut off all this stuff that's mainly mushy is the part that you're not supposed to eat anyway so that i'm very very pleased with this whole thing today and i'm going to let mine ripe next time to that point again so and there's different kinds of, different varieties of jackfruit. So, there's some that have a lighter, lighter pod, and some are darker. These are, like, in between. I've seen them way darker orange than this. And if you go to, like, an Asian restaurant, sometimes they'll have them cut open so that you can see uh, what color it is inside. Because uh, the darker ones, I believe, are a lot sweeter. So, um... Anyway, we, we just went to Sprouts and got this because it's further for me to drive, uh, well, worse to drive me, and I get anxiety on the freeway so bad, I can't, I, I barely, whew, just thinking about when I have a doctor's appointment, if it's booked like a month in advance, I have anxiety up until the day that I have to get on, get in the car to go, because I get anxiety. So, anyway, all right, we're done. Look, here's another piece of Hector Cannibal, what's his name? Uh, I forgot the name of the movie. Whatever it was I said earlier. Silence of the Lamb. Look at that. So weird and creepy, you guys. Oh, man. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, my God. Woo! All right. That's going to go... To, and look, I'm reusing this. You see, this is my dog food bag. I'm reusing it on my cap countertop. 
See, my countertop's not all mess now. I try to reuse everything. But I'm gonna put, I'll put this on the floor so y'all can see this. Look. Hold on. I wanna show ya. Y'all waited all this time. Might as well be able to show you what I got, right? Let's see. Look. Oh, I'm spilling it. Hold on. I gotta throw some of the water out anyway. Look, look at that. That's going to fill up at least three trays, two or three trays, maybe four uh, on, on the harvest right freeze dryer trays to freeze dry. But yeah, oh man. Mmm, mmm. The consistency is like, mmm, mmm. I don't really know. Mango and watermelon. Mango and cantaloupe. It's a little crunchier than a mango. I don't know how to describe the consistency. It's a little crunchier than a mango. Let me think about that. Anyway, all right. But it, the taste to me is... is um, um, cotton candy, mango, and, um, cantaloupe. To me, that's what it tastes like. I don't know if y'all have eaten this before, but let me know what y'all think. What does it taste like to you? <laughs> Somebody's gonna probably send me a message to say it tastes like crap, DD. Anyway, uh, most people like it. I mean, and then look, usually I get more seeds than this, but... That's, that's enough for me to make a good hummus. You see that? So I'll have to show you the hummus. Um, I'm going to put that in the, um, I'm going to put that in the steamer. Let's see, maybe I'll do that now. Let me get under here. It's hard for me to get under this cabinet to get stuff. I can't bend. Let's see. Oh. There. Okay. Oh. Woo. Oh, God, that wore me out. Usually, I call Boris to help me get stuff out from under that cabinet. All right. Ooh, if I had more cabinet space, I wouldn't use any lower cabinets. I'd just do all cabinets at eye level or, you know. That would be a, that would be my dream, you know. Some people like want a mansion and things like that. No, I just want to have enough cabinet space that I don't have to bend down or reach, and I want to get a massage every week. I don't care about fancy cars. All right, this is my microwave steamer. Put a little water, a little bit. Plop that in the microwave. I'm gonna put it maybe. Eight minutes. See what happens. And then I'll be able to tell the consistency of it if it's soft enough that I can take those uh, the the skin off of those those seeds and then uh, mix it in the blender with um, garlic and um, some onion and salt. I'm gonna. And I'm going to cook my garlic and onion first, just because for my bladder, I need it cooked. Um, but you guys could probably do it uh, raw if you wanted to for that hummus. Um, so, what was I saying? What was I talking about? Gosh, I wish I could remember. Whew. You know, I take homeopathic medicine. Um, I try to do that instead of Western medicine, but I do have to take a thyroid for my um, Hashimoto but I, everything else I try to do natural and um, I have really bad severe dry eye and I'm on a remedy right now that I 
think is aggravating a little bit my ADD. But sometimes if you take a remedy that's right for you, it will go so deep that it'll actually cause a little flare. And um, I think I'm having an ADD flare from it. But I'm hoping that it will fix my dry eye because I've just been miserable. And at night, my eyelids stick to my eyes. And I can't tape my eyes shut because my skin's so sensitive. So I put good, I look cross-eyed because I'm trying to find the camera. <laughs> I, I put eye drops in my eye every night, like thick, mm, what do you call it? Ointment. Like so bad I can't even hardly see to get in the bed. So anyway, y'all pray for me. That'd be great. Anybody wants to pray for me? My dry eyes. Um, yeah, my eyelids stick into my eyes. I wake up and it hurts so bad. And I have to get up in the middle of the night, sometimes two, three times a night. I have to go to the bathroom anyway, two, three times a night, but I have to get up because my eyes uh, are sticking to my eyelids and I have to put more drop stuff. I, I use the gel, the thickest stuff that they got on the market. I, I even have this stuff that's called, it's like PRP. It's, uh, they take your blood, they spin it, and they take the plasma from your blood and they make a, a, a drop for your eye to help try to heal the inflammation. So, so I'm done with this. Now I'm just going to start layering it on to, uh, I got a mess here in the floor. I clean that. Uh, Boris will do that for me. He's so sweet. Um, and, um, I'm going to start layering this. I'm just rinsing it onto the, whoa, onto the, uh, what do you call it? And y'all, I, I bleached my sink out real good and cleaned it real good before I do anything too. Cause in case anything drops in the sink, I know my sink's clean, you know? So let me just show you. So we're done with this bowl. Ooh, sound like something popped in the microwave. And let me get a freeze dry tray real quick. Hold on everybody. I'm gonna show you how I do it. We're just gonna make this a long video, I guess. See if I can see. Can y'all see that? All right. And then I'm just going to layer it on the, like that. And I'm going to put it in the freezer. And that way, if I want to start the freeze dry tomorrow, I like to start the freeze dry in the morning because it takes more than 24 hours. And um, so if I start it in the morning and it takes 30 something hours, then the worst case scenario is I have to be up at midnight to get it out. The world is that popping for? Oh, I know why. I didn't put enough water. It's popping in there like popcorn. Woo! Oh, yeah. Hey. Look at that. Oh, maybe that's how I get the seeds out. Look at that. Let me put some more water in here. That's what it was. It's, it was popping like popcorn. Let me put more water. It needs to be covered. I was doing it like I usually do my vegetables. I just put a swig of water, but this needs to be boiling. So let's put it back in there. Man. You see, I don't always know what I'm doing. I'm just showing you what I do do. <laughs> All right. And then I just load, load the tray up like this. Oh, yeah, this is going to be way more, way, way, way more than four trays. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so you see, got it loaded up, and I put put some aluminum foil on top of that. And, uh, and then stick it in the freezer. Look, put the aluminum foil on top. freeze it ahead of time, then the freeze dryer don't have to work as hard. And, uh, there you go. It's ready. And then I put it in my little shelf. I have a shelf. I have an area of my freezer that I have specifically designated for my freeze drying shelves and that we're not allowed to put anything there because if I have an instance where I get bananas real cheap on sale or something like that 
and I want to freeze dry. I want to uh, get you know you got to either freeze them real quick um, or do something with them because they're gonna go bad. You know they're to the point where they're dark enough that they're on sale or whatever. You you got to handle and prepare. So I need a space in the freezer that I can prepare everything real quick. Put them on those trays and put them in there, and then they can sit there a month if they have to. If I don't have time to freeze dry, so um, to run this freeze dryer or whatever. So that's why I always keep a space in the freezer uh, that I can stack them up. You know, um, eight, eight trays. So all right, I'm gonna do another. I'm gonna do another uh, tray. Are y'all getting bored? Y'all getting bored yet? So, maybe some of y'all are watching this at night and falling asleep. Sometimes I like to watch YouTube channels and fall asleep. There's several channels that I really love. I'm going to tell y'all about. There's a lady in Southern California. Her name's Robbie. She is the sweetest thing there is. She's sweet as pie. I love watching her, and um, I get a lot of my inspiration from her. I was going to try to reach out to her because I would love to have, have. Um, I was going to say have tea with her. I guess I could have some chamomile tea. I can have chamomile tea. Certain herbal teas I can have if they don't have tannins in them. Um, you know, but uh, I do want to say a shout out to her because she did. She has inspired me. Uh, to do a lot of things in the garden and just in general. I mean, she's such a Has such a great spirit this lady and um, It's uh, I believe her channel is Robbie and Gary Robbie and Gary in the garden. It's R-O-B-B-I-E I believe I'll try to put the link down for you guys so you can follow her too. She's She's just I love her so and I like to watch Growing Your Greens. I like I like his channel too. He's he's got a lot of uh, he does a lot of good shows. I love to watch. So anyway, like maybe y'all are watching this and falling asleep, bored. Hopefully I won't make too many loud noises and wake you up from your slumber. But if you guys want to have another thing to watch, I have uploaded. I have uploaded um, three play on my playlist, three that I made of here in the mythical forest. Um, sound, so you can just listen to sound. It's pretty much out the window. Filming at the moon. Uh, filming in the garden. And... Um, one of them is with the window with white noise machine that I like to have, and the other is is out part of the garden. So it's the it's it's like ambient noise and um, it's ambient noise and um, the birds and um, so it's like an hour. And if y'all like it, um, let me know if you want me to make it longer than an hour so y'all can go to sleep with that. There's three videos, an hour each in the playlist. If y'all want to put this in the freezer, if y'all want to watch that to go to sleep, um, I made that. So, my son, Omar, he suggested that. And, uh, so, let me get another Because he says that he falls asleep all the time watching YouTube. And so he likes to watch some of those, you know. Uh, there. And one of them I, I did where it's kind of darker. So it's not like a, it's not going to be like a lot of flashing light in your eyes. Because that's one thing. I don't like to fall asleep with, um, I don't like to fall asleep with the TV. Because that flickering on your eyes is not good for you. And, uh. So it's a the both all of them have just one screen uh, of the same thing, so it shouldn't do any flickering. So it won't, you know, have any eye issues. And uh, 
You know, I really should have dried these off. Note to self, note to you guys, because the freeze dryer is going to have to get all that water sucked out of there. So, if you dry this off first before you put it in the freezer, it's going to make ice crystals, you know. So, paper towel it. Anything, any excess moisture is just going to have to make that thing work harder, you know. Let me get a clean... Let me get a clean towel. We'll put a clean towel. I'm out of paper towels. This is a clean towel, fresh. I'm just gonna soak up some of the water here. Um, anyway, so if y'all wanna watch any of the videos that I put up for sleeping, I think it might work for you if that's what you're used to using. You can use you can go on my channel and watch those so it's in the playlist for sleep and um and like i said the screen does not change so it shouldn't make the lighting change and one is just straight up looking out the window at the moon the whole time and another one is looking at uh strings fairy lights on the gate and another one is uh in the garden and uh it's it's just with with uh the flowers and stuff outside in but in at night okay so i have bleached all this out it's clean so i dropped it on the counter but just so y'all know it's a, a clean counter because i bleached all that so anyway i think i've got allergies i never had allergies in my life until just the past couple of years now i've got some allergy issue thingies going on Anyway, just, that's life, right? Just suck it up and deal with it. Okay. So, man, so how many trays was that, you guys? Like three? I think it was three, so this is going to make four trays. So, pretty much a one dragon fruit. Some dragon fruits are way larger than that. So let's just say that's the size of a big football, large football, big, bigger than a football, right? So if you if you get a, dra a dragon fruit, did I just say dragon fruit? J did I? Jackfruit, jackfruit, jack sprat could eat no fat. His wife could eat no lean. Remember that? When we were kids, the fairy rhymes or whatever, nursery rhymes. Okay, my mom used to say that to me. Alright, um, one more. Yeah, so this is gonna be, this is gonna be, uh, four trays. Four trays. Let's soak up some water. Um, man, the other ones, I wish I would have done that. I'm too lazy to go back and get them out of the freezer now. Probably already has ice crystals forming. So, uh, and I've told y'all before, I'm going to say it here because I, I, I'm, uh, I've said it on other videos. Just make sure that when y'all are freeze drying, that do everything sanitary. Because if you don't, if you get bacteria, the freeze drying does not kill the bacteria. Okay? So, you want to make sure it's super, super clean. No bacteria. Because you're going to freeze dry this. And the freeze dryer does not kill the bacteria. As soon as you rehydrate in your mouth rehydration or in water whatever as soon as you rehydrate this stuff is going to have that bacteria still on it that's why you can fr freeze dry yogurt and it's good for you because it doesn't kill that stuff it doesn't kill the good bacteria it don't kill the bad bacteria either <laughs> so this is not enough for a full tray but I might put some. No, I'm not going to. I was going to say I might put something else on it now. Because I really <laughs> have to stress to you. If you keep the same stuff on the tray. What I'll do is I'll. I might take some off of that other tray. Put it on this. Uh, it's better because if you have different items. Some things freeze dry quicker than others. So if you got uh, like blueberries take forever. So you're gonna be freeze drying this and then this will be ready, but the blueberries aren't. And so it's just a pain in the rear. So I suggest just 
try if you can to freeze dry everything that's the same. If you don't have enough to do that, well, just go ahead, you know, because sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't have enough. Let me throw a few bananas, you know. But if you if you try to find something that's similar to freeze dry, then it, it'll freeze dry, you know. Like maybe I could do sweet potatoes with this because they freeze dry around the same time. Um, but berries take forever. Strawberries don't, but blueberries and raspberries and blackberries, they take a very long time. And my, my dear friend, Laura Bora, she wanted me to send her some and I, I did. And I was gonna make a few more extras and I said, uh, I wanted to do strawberries because it takes less time. But I was like, what's your favorite? She's like, blackberries. I'm like, oh, man, it would have been, right? That's okay. I love her. I'm going to make those blackberries for her. But they take a lot longer. A lot, lot longer. And, uh, but, it, 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 you know, and it's okay if they if something happens and they don't get completely dried. But you don't want to try to freeze it from the 20-year stockpile because that stuff's going to get bad in there. So if you're just gonna put it in in a jar and munch on it all week, yeah, you can do that. If it's not completely freeze dried, that's a, sometimes I do that actually with some of the stuff that doesn't get completely freeze dried. I separate it and I put it in a jar and eat it that week. Uh, I don't put it in the same jar as the other good freeze dried stuff because that'll more re rehydrate the other stuff. So I separate it and then I just eat that first. Because sometimes you'll have like one or two three or four pieces that are not, that didn't for some reason get, get freeze dried right and on time, you know, all the way. And you kind of have to, you have kind of have to, uh, when you're, when you're pulling the freeze dry stuff out, you need to wash your hands really, 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 really good. Like super good, scrub your nails and everything because you need to touch it. You have to feel if it's cold at the end of the freeze dry cycle, it's still got moisture in it. It needs to feel not cold at all. And you can tell if you break it open, if you were to break it open and touch it, it feels like ice in the middle. So that's how you know, you do not want to store something for 20 years in a bag that still has ice in the middle. So that's why you need to touch it with your hands after the freeze dry process, before you put everything in there, just make sure that all those pieces, cause all it takes is one piece to contaminate the whole batch. So. That's just a little tip. All right, guys. Oh, let's see. Let's see that. Woo, okay, I'm getting worn out here. Let's see. This is hot. Let me get a spoon. Let me pour this over here. I could even pour that water if I want to. So I try to save everything. And the water from the freeze dryer, I save it. And I use it on my plants. I don't like to throw away anything if I can't, if I don't have to. Look. Ooh, that's hot. Woo, that's hot. Let's see if I can show you. Look. You see how it's popped open? You see? Look. That's the shell. Look. That's, ow, 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 ow. That's the shell that you peel off. Looks like a translucent eggshell, don't it? Okay, so, see that came off, but now, let's see if I have a paring knife. Just to pop it. Look. Oh my goodness. Oh! Okay, see? Oh my goodness. You see? That's a, the shell we don't want. Okay? So, and the, the, the juice, you can use that juice. Keep that juice because you can use that juice to put back in the, back, oof, back in the, um, let's see, here's another one. It's so hot. Woo! Look. It's kind of hard to peel. Ooh. when it's hot, okay. Uh, you can use that juice to put into the blender. You see? 
you can use that juice to put in the blender when you're making your hummus. You see it's, see the consistency is like mashed potatoes almost when you cook it. And then you, yeah, that's a lot of work, but, oh, they see it came off. See? And that's, this is the inside. Look. See how it's mashed up? I'm making a mess. Anyway, so that's what you do. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make the hummus here because it's, it's going to take me a lot longer. I need to sit down and rest a minute, um, and then I'll let this cool a little, little, and um, peel it. So maybe uh, I'll, I'll, I'll video this in a minute, but I can't promise you. Okay. Thanks for watching. Mwah. Hi everybody. Well, I'm going to try and I'm adding this to the um, jackfruit. This is the seeds. I already boiled them and I let them dry because they're too slippery. They're just way too slippery for me to peel. Um, and I'm going to show you. I've already cooked the onion and the garlic to mix in with this. And uh, I am peeling this, but it's very tedious. You see, look, very tedious. So that's going to go in the blender. That one's already peeled. Let's see. Making sure these are soft enough to blend, and they are. You see, the knife just cuts right through. And um, peeling all this off. It's easier. There's probably another method. I haven't looked it up. But see, I just poked a hole back and, and just stuck my knife right under that. I forgot to say hello. <laughs> right under the, uh, right under the skin. There's like a white skin and then right under it, it's like three layers of skin. This is the other skin, look. This is the other weird skin thing that came off of it. You see? See that? All right, and then there's another skin. That's this hard sort of, it's almost like a, 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 an egg. If y'all have ever seen an egg, you pro, if you live in the country, egg, oh, an egg that didn't, uh, that's like it got a translucent, 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 I can't even talk. Shell, translucent, shell, shell. Oh my God. Translucent shell. Man. Talk. I can't even talk. It's like that. And then. Underneath that is another like black brown skin, but you, you don't have to take that off. Just take this hard one off. See? Um, so, anyway, uh, I'm sure y'all are sick and tired of listening to me talk, so I'm going to peel these up. I'm going to go sit down and do this, and then I'm going to come back and show you the rest. I'll, make, I'll, I'll add, add it in the clip. Uh, I got fruit flies, so look, look, look here. I got my little fruit fly holder with my homemade apple cider vinegar in there to catch the fruit flies. But I'm not sure. It's weird because I have one over here. It's I can't take the camera, but it's loaded with fruit flies. Loaded. But for some reason, they're all going to that one by the window instead of this one over here. I don't know what that is. Anyway. Uh, oh, yes, and this is the, the, the broth that's left over from when I did the uh, microwaving of the seeds. 
and I'm gonna use that in the blender. Actually, I'll put it in there now. Hopefully, I don't have, ooh, I really should have put that, you know what? I should put that in the end. Because what if I had too much water, you know? I'll wait. I'm jumping the gun. So anyway, this is tedious. But, you know, I'm going to look on the internet. I love, love YouTube. See if there's an easier way to peel, peel these off. But I did find that drying them, I let them sit and dry for a little while. It really made a difference because they're just too slippery when they're wet and hot. So, I probably should cut those in half before I put them in that blender. Y'all learning with me. I don't remember what I did last time. So, yeah. You see, it just cuts like butter. So they're ready. Uh, there's a bunch of nutrition in these nuts. Seeds, sorry. Seeds. Jackfruit seeds. And that garlic and onions already got my eyes watering. That's about the only time my eyes do water. But you know what? A doctor told me once that when you cry, it makes your dry eyes worse. Now, I don't know how that makes any sense because if you're, if you're lacking of tears, your, tear, your eyes are not producing tears properly to keep, keep your eyes from being dry, why is it that crying makes your dry eyes worse? I don't know if any of y'all are eye doctors in there watching this. Let me know. And if you got any eye doctors watching this, let me know if there's any new miracle miracle cures out there besides prayer for my eyes. Because my eyes hurt me so bad sometimes. It's just, oh, man. I have good days and bad days, but, you know, I got to keep putting eye drops all day long. But they also told me that my eyes, the pain that I have in my eyes, the doctor told me this, does not match the level of dryness that I have. So he's not sure what it could be causing this severe pain. But I did take this medication for interstitial cystitis that the lawsuit right now going on about people having macular degeneration and all kind of stuff going on with their eyes because of that medication and I did take it I'm not on it now but I'm on another I'm on a supplement now instead and uh, I don't know I told you I wasn't going to ramble but I just on a, on a roll now and I guess what I'll do is I'll turn this off and I'll come back and show you once I mix it up Okay, I'm back, everyone. I've moved to the other side of the kitchen. Um, I finished. I had to sit down, and I finished peeling. Sorry, I just don't know how to do this camera angle thing. I don't know where the camera is for me to look at, y'all. I, I don't know if I've got it upside down or what. Anyway, um, this is the uh, finished peeling. These are all the little peels. I've peeled, so of course you know where that's gonna go. Compost, so that. And I decided that I wanted to uh, soften this up just a little bit more. Um, if it was too soft, it would be really hard to peel. Um, and so I wanted to soften it a little bit more for the hummus and to go in the um, blender here. I think you can see the blender. Um, and let's see. Well, I got this rigged here. Uh, so anyway, it's already, I already cooked the, the onion, pre-cooked the onion and the, um, the uh, garlic. And so put this in the blender to blend it up real smooth. 
It's a little warm still. Hope the blender doesn't pop off the lid to the ceiling. You know, when you put something hot in the blender, that can happen. And so, anyway, I wanted to show you this. Hey, Louie, what you doing? Uh, I went to the garden and I pulled some of these pods off of the nasturtium, I think I'm saying it right, flower. This is what the leaf looks like. Look, these are the leaves. Well, what happened? These are the leaves. And the, 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 this is an edible flower. Edible flower. And these pods, I'm going to put them in, I'm going to split this hummus up in half after I blend it. And I'm going to cut this up. I'm going to put this in there. Oh, I dropped one. Well, that one's going to the compost. Uh, it's going to go in Boris's because it's um, spicy. It's kind of like, tastes like, um, um, oh my God, I can't think of the word. It tastes like, uh, well, I can't think of the word. What in the world? Um, the stuff that you put on sushi. Oh my God, I can't think of the, what the word is. I'll try to think of it and I'll tell you. But anyway, um. That, that green spicy stuff that you put on sushi. Y'all know what it is. I just can't think of the name. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Anyway, that's what it tastes like, kind of. It's real zing. It has a zing to it. So, anyway. Let's see. Take that out just in case it's on accidentally. I don't think it is. I'm going to blend this up. And, oh, this is the juice. So, I don't want it to be too runny. So, I'm going to put a little at a time. Let's see. Well, yep, I guess I do need a little. All right. Ooh. Hold on a minute. Let me get something to move it a little. Unplug that thing first. You don't want. Well, at least I unplugged it. Makes me nervous. Yeah. A little bit more. See that? There. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. That's it, guys. I just wanted to show y'all the end result of this hummus. And I forgot to tell you to put some, sh not sugar, put some salt in it. Put some salt in it. Yeah. Because it wouldn't taste very good if you didn't put some salt. So, there you have it, you guys. I'm going to let Boris try some tonight with some, maybe some uh, crackers or some, uh, I don't have any pita bread. But maybe we'll go get some. 